Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Hey everyone, B1B Flyer here, and in this video, I'm going to unbox and review the Inner Sphere Command Lance and Battle Lance boxes. I will mention that the opinions of these miniatures are on my own based on my purchase of these products and not because they were given to me to review by CGL or anyone else. With all that being said, let's move on. First up is the Inner Sphere Command Lance. If you're buying this at retail, this is what it'll look like on the shelf. If you purchase it online, this is what will show up in the mail. You can see the miniatures in the front, and if you flip it over it talks about the contents, the Alpha Strike cards, and Pilot cards. The first mech we'll review is the Stinger. You can see here as it compares to the original out of print mech that was based off of the old Macross art, it is a little bit more dynamic to say the least. It's not locked with the arms being crossed pose and it's definitely got a lot more defined detail. You can also see that it's standing a little bit shorter in height, but that's partly due to the running pose as well as the scaling that has brought some of the lighter mechs down a little bit. Looking at the miniature, you've got a lot of detail along the sides and the legs as well as in the torso area. It's not as smoothed out and aircraft-like, which was what the original miniature was based off of. You definitely get the definition of the jump jets on this model, which were not there on the previous. I will say the antenna is definitely larger, more of almost a blade style antenna versus a wire style. I do understand why they did it. It definitely prevents it from breaking and shipping and all that. Uh, it just, it looks a little bit larger than it needed to be overall in the miniature. It's almost the size of this medium laser in his arm. So that being said, that's my critique of the design. If there's really anything to say about that. As far as uh, sculpt is concerned, there's a little bit of, you know, goof on the vents and the jump jet here. Uh, the flash overall is is not bad. You do have it on the mostly on the underside, which is where it's easiest to deal with. And I do like the fact the way that they pin the feet to the base. You get the just small pegs inset into the plastic. So if you want to take it off and move it around, you just have little stubs on the bottom to remove, which is really handy because you're not stuck with a post or anything like that. Overall, I'm really happy with the way this looks. You, you definitely have your work cut out for you if you're going to individually highlight any of these panels and you're, you're going to have a, a maybe a little bit of difficulty finding places to put some of the you know decals or anything like that if you're using any of those from Fighting Prana Graphics but, uh, or any other decal maker, but there are some areas where you can, you can make it work. Up next is the Valkyrie, and again we've got a much more dynamic pose, although the Valkyrie is in a walking stance. This one here has been modified because it was missing an arm, so that's why it looks a little bit like less of a mech, but you can get the idea though that he is the original is a little bit taller, but definitely lacking in the overall depth of detail. They did kind of keep it fairly similar to the same pose, just the legs being switched. So I do appreciate that at least. Looking at the new miniature, you do get some built-in antennas that you don't have to add yourself. Again, a more of a blade style, but again, I think they're adequately produced and you still get the intent. The jump pack is uh, fairly defined as far as you, you completely understand what it what its purposes are there and it does have the jump jet ports in the legs. The weapons overall look look really good. You've got a you know arm and defined ports for the LRM, so there's a lot of added detail that you didn't get initially with the older, you know, 30 year old sculpt. I do like the beefing up of the legs to give it a little bit more of a heft to it, despite the fact that it is still a light mech and it is being scaled down compared to the other ones. I think it fits in well, just like the others. The flash is a little bit on some of these hard edges, so you may or may not miss it. There's some contact points on the back of the jump jets there, and there might be a little bit more that shows up on maybe your individual pieces, but, but most of it looks to be following just the hard edge lines, which really is a great place to just clean it up very quickly, or even if it's missed, it does not show up nearly as much as it would if it was in the middle of the panel. I'm pleased with the way that this looks. I'm happy that it's got a, a better pose, and if you want to do anything modification-wise, there's a lot of open area for these joints for anybody that wants to get handy with their hobby blades, so the options for reposing this miniature are quite good. Maybe a little bit of cleanup here on the back of these arm plant panels, but flat spots and easily taken care of. For the new archer, you can clearly see he is quite, quite bigger than the older out-of-print sculpt. So 
gained a lot of, of mass, bulk, width, height, you name it. He is bigger all around. Now, if you're not a fan of that, I don't know what to tell you, but I'll tell you this, the details on this miniature are really, really, really good. The entire miniature, it harkens back to what it was designed off of, but just takes that and brings it into the current state of the way the miniatures are starting to look. And of course, you know, they were all designed together, but I just, I really like the way this miniature looks. The detail on the missile launchers is, is really well present in this sculpt. The plastic definitely shows a lot of the intricate detail on the insides of the missile doors. All the missile holes are well defined and even. It, it's, you know, you got a little flash on the ends of these, but you know, there's gotta be some point, you know, where they, they meet the mold line. So, but again, those are, I mean, they're right there. They're easy to get to. Don't be too rough with them because you know, these plastic can, can definitely be bent and or broken. Um, you do get a little bit of front edge stuff here that'll be maybe a little tight to get to based on the area that it's in. Uh, a little on the front of the arm, the fists as well. So uh, nothing that's that's horrible. Uh, a little bit of the curved press thing out here, but again, if you're handy with a hobby blade or the back of a hobby blade and a little bit of sanding or brush, you're going to get a lot of it. Uh, a lot of it's well hidden. You know, it's, it's, this isn't the cleanest sculpt by, by any means but you're definitely getting a lot better miniature and a lot of surface area to really kind of do any kind of painting that you want, with, you know, patterns or details, decals, you name it. I do like that they move the antennas from the center of the head on the older model, which were actually, I think, lasers or point defense something, but made them, again, blade style antennas that are gonna be much more robust and breaks up the individual look of the miniature. And then of course the, the cockpit is, well defined on this whereas in the older sculpt miniatures you kind of had to guess at where it might be some people put it up here some people put it down here you know this that and artwork never really matched so this is great on catalyst to get get it all brought together so that people are not confused as to where the pilot sits and what is what on the miniature itself last but not least is the new marauder you can see it gained a little bit in height but really the biggest gains are going to be in the lower body and then just the mass overall the legs are so much wider and more defined. They're not as spindly as you can see in the photograph, you know, straight on the thing is, you know, I never realized it looked that way until I put it next to this new sculpt. So I, I like them both, don't get me wrong. I'm not hating on the older sculpt, but I feel that this new one is a solid improvement in a lot of areas that maybe cause some frustration, especially assembly, because those old metal ones were tricky to keep together. If you bump them, drop them, they'd fall apart. Obviously not an issue for the plastics. That being said, it's not the perfect sculpt by any means, if perfect is even possible, but I'm not gonna try and say that. The, the first issue that uh, when you saw me review the clan box set is the post is underneath the foot here. You can see the cylinder there. Again, you can, you can clip it and trim it and the leg will float just fine. It's just one of those, you know, I think that was probably the only option they had. I just wish maybe they would have left the leg a little lower and had a toe contact point back here. Still would have been almost the exact same effect, but that's just, again, a minor, minor thing. Overall, if you build up some sand or some putty or, or whatever, if you want to have it standing on a hill, you could, or you can completely remove it and the leg will hold just fine. Some other things about the sculpt that are definitely an improvement is so much more detail that's actually defined on the legs. It's not kind of shallow and, and sort of hidden and easily lost, especially on the lead sculpts where the metal was soft. So I like that a lot. I love the muzzle brake type detail on the auto cannon. And then of course the fact that there's a difference on the left from the right, this is the ammunition feed, uh, kind of the relief area. So, I mean, it's, it's a well thought out design. It really is quite, quite well done. I'm a little disappointed in the intake vents here. When I review the Hero uh, Mex, the, the Grayson Carlisle one has a better defined area here. I don't know why they aren't the same, but I'm just letting you know that's a little bit of an issue. And then there's some, this is some mold line here that just inconveniently goes right through where this reverse L shape would be. It's not prevalent on this side, but over here it really does show. And this is on several of the ones that I have. So that'll be there, unfortunately. So a little trimming, maybe a little uh, fix up there for, for some folks. Uh, the, the seam lines do run across the center flat of the top upper arms, which can be a little bit difficult to, to completely smooth out. So you may, you may have to struggle with that a little bit if you're trying to clean it up as, as best you can. 
but the the remainder of the miniature overall is not too too difficult there's some you know contact points here and there but those are to be expected and most of them are on the underside so it's it's well well thought out and planned a little bit on the backs of the arms but again reachable and then the stance itself is this one's got a little bit more of a droopy arm i've already painted one of these as you saw in the great f legion but it was the, the other version but the arm ended up being loose the the glue was not a solid contact point so what i recommend you do is you check the arms give them a little give and take on there just to make sure they're completely adhered if they're not you know it's no problem just to glue them right then and there but you want to make sure you have all that taken care of or if you're going to reposition them obviously using hot water or if you're going to use heat then you know clearly be careful but just to keep in mind that the post in here while it is you know rigid enough to and robust enough to hold the arms up the glue on one of mine was not adequate and it popped off so i'm glad it happened before i painted it again great job on this the the overall miniature it just stands out the increase in size to to fit the new scaling is great and you have plenty of room to really work and show off your painting skills or just to take nice details and shadows for folks that just want to get them on the table but want to have some nice highlighted areas that show really what a nicely painted and nicely designed model can look like so again one of my favorites and i'm, I'm really glad that this model has been redesigned the way that it was and now moving on to the Inner Sphere Battle Lance box. Again, here's what it'll look like when you receive it. It's got a transparent window for seeing what's inside. If you flip it over, you can see the contents listed. It's got the pilot cards and the Alpha Strike cards. Also, we'll mention it talks about having the record sheets available at bg.battletech. Apparently, those are not quite updated as of the time of this video being made. Uh, sure that they will be in t due time, as Catalyst would not have advertised it if they weren't intending on following through with that. So be patient with that. They may or may not be ready by the time that you are accessing that. Moving on to the miniatures. First up is the Wasp. You can see again, fairly close to the original metal sculpt. Actually, this one is plastic, but the same size. You can see there's a dynamic pose instead of standing there kind of bow-legged. Definitely helping in the detail and dynamic pose department. Obviously, you can repose them a lot more easily than the older metal ones since they were one piece. The miniature itself, again, is moving at a high, kind of a high speed run pose as the Stinger was. You definitely get the jump packs added in now, so it does look like it's got jump packs on there, jump jets, so that's always a nice detail to have on a miniature that's equipment correct. The legs are actually more detailed, I think, than the Stinger, and I think that's a good thing as well because you get some more wider lower legs, which kind of makes it look a little bit more balanced and then you actually have flat areas on the outside so if you want to put numbers and decals and things i think that's a, a good spot to put them i will say I, i'm kind of underwhelmed by the size of the tiny little srm2 that's sitting underneath the leg here uh, i would have thought it would have been a little bit bigger as it was on the metal version that they made for a brief amount of time from ironwood metals so i'm not too happy with that but it's it's not a horrible and then the other thing i'm i'm kind of curious as to why they did it but kind of understand, I think I, I know why, is that all the four antenna that would have been on here are just kind of stubbed. Now, the miniature itself, uh, the older one, didn't come with any. You would have had to drill holes and then add the four antennas that would have kind of resembled what they were on the Macross Veritech fighters that they were based off of and all that. Whereas here, now it's it's kind of like, well, you could probably just leave it alone. I guess it gets the idea of antennas, but may, I maybe wish they would have been a little bit longer or just done what they had done with the other versions with a modified blade antenna. At least it would have been would have been something there. Now it's kind of feel like I need to go in and cut these down a little bit and then drill the holes simply because I don't think I can get a drill bit centered on these posts. So I don't want to start doing that and have it go off in the wrong direction. So uh, again, it's, it's not horrible. I just think of all the ones that are done and as you see the phoenix hawk later i think they did it right with that versus this one where i think they could have maybe changed the the way it would have been produced but that's just my my two cents you got a mold line along the lower left arm here that's right on the outer edge for the most part it should be pretty easy to clean up and then the rest of it there's really not a lot that sticks out to me that was going to be a difficult or bad mold cast or anything like that maybe a little cleanup on some of these hard edges on these armor plates that are kind of tucked in throughout. But again, if you're not really looking for them, you're not going to notice. 
Like back of the arms is fairly commonplace for a lot of the contact points where they're cut from the mold jets, so there'll be maybe a little cleanup there. Again, nothing egregious, nothing slipped or uh, miscast or oddly placed. As far as reposes go, you might have a little more difficulty because you do have the full 90 degree bend in the leg. So you're kind of stuck with that unless you really want to get heavy into the cutting. So that being said, you know, you could maybe make it look a little bit more vertical or standing or stepping up on something. And you got a lot of room to work with with the arm positioning if you wish. And now moving on to the Phoenix Hawk, you can see the significant height difference based on the elongated, tall, lanky, previous out of print version. In addition to that being helped by the tall jetpacks that were on the back of the mech. So it definitely brings it into the more realm of, of normal height, but still clearly defined and recognizable as a Phoenix Hawk. You definitely gain the de benefit of detail along throughout the arms and legs, along with the just mass and bulk to really show more like a walking tank versus the super hyperspeed fighter that it was from the Macross era. Moving on to the sculpt itself, you can see the very first thing about the antenna here is that they're, they're shorter, but they're clearly defined. They're not a blade style. You can see both of them, you know, in there on each side. And then the nice thing is, is that they're protected from the jump jets. So they're not ever going to snap off because of handling or being shipped or transported or whatever. So all in all, a really nice design feature. And I wish that would have been incorporated on all of them, uh, but I'll take you know what I can get. The other thing I noticed that was a little bit kind of lost in the d details there is the the hand for the large laser arm is just barely barely visible i think i would have liked to have seen that maybe a little more defined i know they had to scale down the large laser but maybe this should have been a little bigger and left a little more room on the front for the hand grip just to make it look a little bit more like the older version but that's again it's it's minor you know the the hand being holding the gun is part of the sculpt so i, I understand that it's just, I feel like the, the detail is almost maybe an afterthought or just lost in the blockiness of this, this setup here. I really like the, the detail on the canopy, the intake jet vents, the, the defined you know, panels on the legs, which you know, that's gonna make it harder for decals for sure, but you know, you've got the sides here with some flat areas, so it's not, not terrible. Uh, I do like the removal of that kind of the cone hip joint and all that, There's a little bit of a build up here. I don't know if that's necessarily part of the design. It might be some flash and stuff like that. I, I like the recesses in the joints. Great job on the small peg for the foot just to hold that and keeping the the original design of the two part foot versus the flat foot pad that most mechs have. There is a little bit of a sprue jet on the back of the legs here, but not, not terrible. A little bit on the underside of the arm. All of that seems to be fairly easily accessible and, and not too severe. So overall, I'm, I'm very pleased with how this looks. You get the nice dynamic pose, much more scaled into a more lumbered over and not just tall, lanky sculpt that was the previous. And definitely a lot of detail on the jump jets that would have been lacking on the out of print version. So again, I, I think it's beautiful. I love it. I'm really happy with the Phoenix Hawk. Just the minor complaint really about the large laser not really looking like as much of a large laser and allowing for the hand. Moving on to the Rifleman. You can see he's got a little bit more height as with most of the heavies and the assaults, they got larger. The initial pose does have the arms pointed a little bit up and then the one you've got that's painted there is one that I've customized. I did aim the arms up a little bit, so they would have been more level, but positioning the arms is, is really not that difficult either with hot water or just cutting and re-gluing. You definitely notice the difference that the legs look twice as big as the older Macross style sculpt. And of course you've got a little bit more robust and defined vents and details throughout the torso and the, the hips are wider as well. Looking at the sculpt, you got some great muzzle brake detail that you can have a lot of fun with. I think one of the users I had seen already had gone and drilled them out. I would be very, very careful with doing that, but it is possible. Uh, however, regardless, it's nice not just having a straight cylinder at the end or maybe just a little bit change in diameter. This is a really nice detail that they added for the auto cannon barrels. Even the maybe shell ejection ports, I don't know, there's, there's two of them on there, so I'm not really sure. Maybe it's down here but there's some room maybe to customize it and make some more you know, fun little details to add to it, add-ons to the, to the mech itself for those that are interested. Just looking at it from the front, I mean, you can see there's just vents and 
events and lights and little just details that really being brought out by the ability of having this this originally designed in a 3d sculpt that being said the also the first thing you notice is that there's some mold seams that go right across the top because the left and right torso sections are separate from the main body due to the probably the depth of these cuts here so that being said since they're individual pieces they're going to have their own set of individual casting lines so they're they're on top but you know they're they're highly visible so you probably want to at least shave some of these down because they're they're not going to just show up and not be noticeable for the most part i will say the the antenna array seemed to be mostly without many uh type of flash or, or seams on it that were that were noticeable on the ones that i have so that's good that that avoided it being that it's a little bit thinner the arms themselves again are well well detailed fairly robust good areas to to work with and to show off your painting skills or maybe just add some details or decals things like that it looks like the torso might be one piece with the the center torso and the hip that being said you could cut right down the middle if you were going to try to turn it or anything the legs like i said were so much wider and, and just overall beefier than the original so there's a lot of surface area a lot of flat areas but at the same time balanced out with some nice detail that harkens back to the original sculpt but does change a lot of the angles and gives you a lot more definition on the the depth of the actual recessed elements so uh, the feet are all i mean they look very very similar to the the old school ones but they do have some chunks and stuff on there that you'll need to clean up if you want to you know do so some of them might be worse than others it does get a little bit i would say soft on the outer details here this is this is where i'm starting to see maybe some elements like the upper torso outer edges here these are sharp edges whereas the ones here are soft i don't know if that's intentional or if it's just part of the production process and some dyes or or molds were not as crisp or whatever i'm just pointing out what i'm seeing i i do like the increase in size i do like the idea that i can move the arms a little bit if i want to and I love the, the new centered cockpit. Again, similar with the Archer that you just had, you know, folks not sure where the cockpit was and the old art from forever ago. Sometimes artists thought it was up here. Sometimes they thought it was down here. You know, it, it's nice to have some defined canopies and be able to just say, all right, that's what I'm gonna paint. So, or aim if you're playing, playing against them. But I, I really do like the new Rifleman. I also like that the arms are scaled appropriately more with the torso i felt like the older version the arms were a little too big for the body so this seems to be much more balanced out and even and last but not least is the one of the fan favorites the warhammer definitely has a lot more bulk and mass compared to the old metal sculpt height width girth however you want to define it definitely gained in all those areas most notably will be the the legs and lower body as well as the the arms the ppc um, I guess upper arms where the, not the barrels are, but the, the housing of the actual weapon areas definitely are, are much beefier than the original metal. Looking at the miniature, you can see already that it's it's got a longer, I'd say longer barrels. The old one had a little bit more sticking aft in line with the Macross art. Uh, mine does have some initial bend upward here a little bit, which I'll have to fix with some hot water. The right side seems fine. A little bit of detail here and there. Some it seems soft on on some side, but not as much. I don't know, but I'm not I'm not really too concerned about that. Anything that kind of breaks up a standard cylinder, I'm happy with, even if it's maybe a little softer. It's not a hole or anything. It's meant to be just I think depression, so it'll hold some some shadow or some edge to to highlight on. This one is doing the the backwards lean. And I checked and I have another one that's not leaning quite so much. So you will probably need to take it and get it, you know, push from the upper side back here and it'll probably bend a little bit through the, the hips and maybe the ankles and get it more even keeled. And then you can adjust the arms after you get the, the body standing up a little more even. I thought it was, it looked like he was just kind of maybe on the, on the, on his heels leaning back. And sure enough, like I said, the other one that I had is doing the same thing. I like the, the side mounted SRM6. I know the standing up one, and you know, I guess if you wanted to change it, you could with a quite probably a decent amount of work, but I feel it's appropriately sized. I like that they left the little doors on there versus going with just open, open holes. The, the torso itself on this, I, I, it took me a while to notice it, and hopefully you can 
you can see it, but if you look and you go up, the torso, the top of the head is off to an angle. The right side is kind of going upward. That's something that one of the first things I was kind of staring at, I was like, that seems a little odd because the head's not mobile on this miniature, so that shouldn't be moving. But it's not minor, but it's also not easily noticed depending on the angle that you're looking at. So, you know, I'm, but I'm just trying to, to assess what I see on these. The feet have the similar profile to the rifleman. You do have the flash on the outer edges here. Shouldn't be too bad to, to get to. The details on this, again, there's some, some soft side, hard, soft edges that probably should be a little bit sharper, but as you go up the leg, it seems like they get sharper. So it, it might've been intentional. And then the, the back really, you know, not too much going. It actually looks very similar, I think, to the old metal one. It's just got some various little recessed areas that they couldn't do with the metal sculpts due to just being metal limitations. So I do, I do appreciate the, the shoulders being having actual width to them instead of being much more short and stubby. So there's, you know, more of a, a realistic housing appearance to appearance to a shoulder joint. And then it looks like the weapons pods, which, you know, medium lasers, machine guns, flamers, all that good stuff. They look like they're attached separately. There's a little bit of a gap on this side versus this one. So that might be something you might see error wise, or it might be something you might want to take off if you're making different ones. So options there for you, if you want to, get a little bit further into miniature hobby things there. So the overall, the, the top side though, for as far as mold lines are concerned, is clean other than the, the barrels, which are always gonna have obviously two sides to it. But that's the, one of the easiest things to get to and, and probably the, at the very least people will give that a quick once over. But overall looking at it, I will say this, that the sculpt itself, as far as cleanup is concerned, is is really good. It's like I said, it's not, it's not the best, but of the of the ones that I've seen, but it's definitely up in the top five probably. So I am happy with it. I, I just you know this this head thing is is actually it's prevalent on the other two sculpts that I have. So I'm gonna go ahead and chalk that up to a missed QC area there, and uh, hopefully it'll get maybe get fixed later. But I'm not super hopeful that's gonna be anytime soon. You know, so there is there is that. I'd say it's an error in the sculpt, but thankfully it's it's not super super noticeable. But I at least wanted to point that out so that everyone was aware. And that's it for the reviews of all the miniatures in the box sets. Tex, please take us out. Certainly hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and leave your questions or comments below. Follow us on Facebook at Battletech Camo Specs Online. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Shutdown sequence, whatever.